Hello everyone, my name is Skalti, and today we're going to be looking at a tips and tricks guide to early game coupons and why you should research hard drives as soon as you can. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. First things first, let's go ahead and go over why researching hard drives early game is very beneficial. It's for a couple of reasons. One, you get alternate recipes. Those are great because you're more likely than not going to be saving resources or you're going to be saving energy because you might be able to make with one constructor what you needed to use four constructors to make for the vanilla recipe. So it's to save you not only the resources it costs to make those machines, but the energy to power those machines and also the space that those machines occupy. And space can be very important, especially if you like compact builds or if you're just trying to keep things consolidated and organized. The more things you have, the more things you have to keep track of. Additionally, researching hard drives early game or early on in the game is beneficial because when you research a hard drive, you unlock three alternate recipes to choose from. Now those three recipes are random, but to a degree. Those three recipes will be dependent on what you have the ability to make currently. So if you only have, say, tiers one and two unlocked, you're only gonna be presented with alternate recipes for items that you can make within those tiers. So say you wanted an alternate recipe for reinforced iron plates. Before you even unlock tiers three and four, you definitely wanna go research some hard drives because your likelihood of getting an alternate recipe for reinforced iron plates is significantly higher. So that can be massively beneficial. Maybe it's an alternate recipe where you can make more reinforced iron plates per minute than the vanilla recipe, which means you have more Mark II belts at your disposal, or you have the ability to throw those into the awesome sink and get more points early on to get more coupons to get more things out of the awesome shop that can benefit your factory layout and design. So with that, let's go ahead and transition over to getting points from the awesome sink for your coupons. So around all of the crash sites in the game are various components or various <clears throat> items on the ground. And these can range from simple tier one things like wire or iron plates, but they can also range up to more complex things like computers and motors. And the more complex the item, the more points you get, the more points you get, the more coupons you get. Now the coupon cost for, uh, for coupons, the coupon cost for coupons, the point cost for coupons early on is fairly cheap, but it does go up very quickly. And that's because it's supposed to match your growth in the game, because it's supposed to be give or take exponential, if you will. So by putting these more complex items into the awesome sink early game, you get more coupons up front, rather than just a slow trickle of something like say, excess screws or iron plates, for example. So it's definitely beneficial to go find crash sites for the hard drives and the more complex components you can find on the ground. So let's go ahead and find a crash site. Also one thing to quickly note, when you do go hard drive hunting, I would highly recommend you bring components to create biomass burners to generate power because some of the pods will require uh, some form of power to unlock and the amount can vary. So I'd say be safe, five or six biomass burners uh, would be like my recommended. Um, definitely bring some beacons because should you come across a crash site where you don't have the components or the power to unlock the actual pod, you can at least throw down a beacon, take note of, hey, this is a crash site and here's what you need for it sort of situation. And you can easily find it again later when you are prepared with the necessary resources to open it. So with that, now let's go ahead and get to our crash site. So around each crash site, like I mentioned, you're gonna find various items on the ground. So we got some wire over there. looks like that's some motors, maybe some reinforced iron plates. Oh, it's just a bar and that's a hostile. So guarding each crash site and did he? Oh yeah, he sees me, okay. So around each crash site, you're generally, generally going to find some form of hostile creature, be it the little flies, these dudes, the little um, charging boar 
guys. So let's just go ahead and take this guy out. I think he's easily. He might be like stuck there. Yeah, he looks stuck. That's convenient. So this guy has the ranged attack, as you can see here. As you can see here. There we go. Uh, and then when you get up close, he does like this little up front shotgun like that. You can just step away from it. Get your two jabs in. Step back. Two more. Step back. And uh, he was bugged out. That was kind of weird, but so not too difficult to uh, to take out. So this site seems secure now. I don't think there's anything else left around. So let's go ahead and collect the items. So we got nine motors. Oh, hello, doggo. Can I? I'm gonna tame you. Come here. Guest star of the show right here. Are you friendly? Yeah, we got a doggo. Nice. Okay. Let's see, we got some reinforced iron plates. Some more motors. Okay, so we got 30 motors. That's a solid find. Got some wire, some more reinforced iron plates, and some more wire here. Let's see, make sure we got everything from around here. So it looks like we have it all. All right, so for this pod, we need 40 megawatts of power. So that's 30, or I'm sorry, it's two biomass burners. Let's go ahead and put these in place. Throw that down, connect these up, and then let's go ahead and get these powered up. So convenient, we uh, killed that alien dude and we now have some fuel. So it takes 40, these produce 30, so we have 60 total. Let's go ahead and get this actually powered on now and be quick about it. Go ahead and open this up, get our hard drive, easy peasy. Go ahead and collapse this down. Cute doggo. Little floppy boy. All right, so let's go ahead and get back to our main base. All right, so after a short walk, we are back. So let's go ahead and first off, let's go ahead and get this hard drive started on the research. That's scanning. And then let's go ahead and take a look at how many points we're going to get from the awesome sink. Let's go ahead and drop in. Uh, let's go ahead and drop in the reinforced iron plates too. Just for kicks. So that's going to go in. Let's take a look. Oh, we have no power. Where's the power going? Okay, let me go ahead and turn on some power real quick. I'm not cheating, I promise. <laughs> okay. So, as you can see, the point values start to really go up. The first coupon was 1,000. We're already up into the 5,000s for a coupon that we saw there. Okay. 8,000. And I think we're just, yeah, we're just putting in the reinforced iron plates. So you can see the point difference. So we're, these are the reinforced iron plates going in right now and we're getting 120 per plate versus the motors were giving us over a thousand. So let's just go ahead and call it here. So we're going to get 13 coupons out of this. Let's go ahead and see what we can buy. Okay, so 13 coupons, not a lot, but also not a little. When it comes to the walls, uh, or when it comes to buying anything in general from the awesome shop, my recommendation, should you choose to accept it, would be buy things that serve uh, a function. Something that's not just aesthetics or something that serves both. So these conveyor walls, for example, this is a guaranteed buy because you can really clean up your factory based on how you can route things around and keep things clean, especially if you've seen my guides. This is like the number one thing that I use in all of my guides to hide away all of that spaghetti belting. Let's look at, okay, wall power outlets. These are huge for avoiding any kind of spaghetti that's going on inside of your factory area with cables stretching to and from and across, you know, the great plains of whatever this planet's called. Um, 
So this is definitely a huge buy too. So let's see, we have, that was four, that's five, so we nine, so we got four more left. The foundations, these are pretty beneficial besides like maybe the double ramp pack early on for like exploring. This is definitely a solid buy based on how these function. If you really want the frame foundation, not that bad of a purchase, but you can live without it and just easily replace like your 8x4 foundations with these later. Uh, we don't need the factory cart. The walkways, maybe factory railing, not so much. Like this is all like aesthetic stuff and you you should be able to get around your factory without using walkways just yet. We definitely don't need statues. Maybe the coffee cup if you really want. Um, and def don't spend coupons on parts. Please do not do that. That's just a terrible idea. So let's actually, for exploration purposes, to, you know, go find more crash sites. Let's go ahead and throw the double ramp pack in there. So let's, what do we got here? 12. We got room for one. Can't really get anything here. If you really wanted to, it's a toss up, I'd say, between like maybe getting the double ramp pack and this conveyor wall mount if you wanted to keep your belts elevated. Um, but you can kind of get away with that by using the conveyor walls here. So if you want to prioritize exploration, definitely get the ramp pack. If you want to keep your factories organized up front, go ahead and grab the conveyor wall mount. And then let's see, one coupon. Uh, let's go ahead and let's get the coffee cup. So just like that, we got three really good items. We got these wall outlets and these are fantastic. Let's see if I can, I don't even have walls unlocked yet. Yes, I do. Okay. I need a foundation. I would just place it here just for now. So these are great if you're not familiar. So you can either do a double, which has a node on both sides. So this is good if like you're running power from like maybe a building to a building. This is like the exterior side and this is the interior side. So you can just connect power through a wall like that. Or if you wanted to connect them along a wall, you just go like that and stretch it from one side of your factory, you know, all the way down to the other sort of situation. I uh, keep things really clean that way instead of, you know, stretching it all the way across like that kind of thing. It's just, it can be a little messy. And then we also grabbed the conveyor walls. Now these are definitely fantastic. Yeah, we'll just put it in the same spot again. So as you can see, you got room for a conveyor belt here so you can always you know pump things in from outside your factory or into your factory uh to you know wherever you want to go or maybe you have a miner and you want to encase all of the belting bringing it from the miner to your factory uh go ahead and just run it through the wall and keep it in an enclosed space as well and then i think the big ticket item that we unlocked would be the double ramp Oh, we want the eight by eight. So this is really awesome because when you place a regular 8.4 ramp, you can't just place another one, for example. You just can't place another one next to it and go in, go up easily, as you can see here. Let me go ahead, can I build this? Okay, so I do have, I do have creative mode on so I can freely build things. So I'll do that to show you guys. So if you wanted to build up, and you guys might've seen this in my scaffolding guide on how to, build a vertical factory without using like a fly mod or a jetpack. So you have to place the eight by four ramp, then place an eight by four foundation and then another ramp and then, you know, another foundation and then another ramp and then another foundation, etc. And that can be extremely tedious, not to mention wasteful on concrete because the eight by eight double ramp, as you can see here, this costs five concrete to use. Whereas the eight by four ramp costs five as well. You're essentially getting double the ramp for the same price. You're saving quite a bit. And what's beneficial is that these can be built up next to each other. So you can just keep building up for days. You just keep going, get up to like a high cliff side, or if you're like building in a space, uh, you can use this to elevate yourself. And then if you hit the uh, a corner and you want to go up and around, do something like this and just keep going up sort of situation and then get you to a pretty decent height. Oh, hello, Doggo. You're so cute. They're so cute, dude. 
Um, so yeah, I would highly recommend these being some of the first items you unlock from the awesome shop. So let's go ahead and take a look and see if our hard drive is done. I don't think so. We got two minutes. All right, so we're going to go ahead and time lapse that. I'm sorry. What? Oh, you just killed my dog? You just killed my dog? What the heck? You're dead. You're dead. You're so dead. Wow. No! <sighs> I am not worthy. I'm sorry. I have to go find another dog. But we will after this hard drive completes. All right, so we got it researched, and hey, oh, we got the bolted iron plate. These are pretty great. So look at this, 15 per minute. We are definitely going to unlock this. So let's go ahead and take a look at the comparable recipe. So we're going to construction, throw this up. Oh, wrong, wrong thing. We need the uh, assembler, which we don't actually have unlocked. So we can at least look at it in here. Reinforced iron plate. There we go. Also, by the way, that shortcut to pull up that search thing is N. Awesome function. Also, you can do math. Check this out. Uh, eight times three. It's 24. So you can do math without using a calculator. I'd recommend a calculator or whatever because you can log it and stuff. So anyway, reinforced iron plate. So we have our standard, which produces five per minute. And then we have our alternate that produces 15 per minute. So we can get the same quantity per minute. Or So let's say we wanted to make 15 per minute. In order to make 15 per minute with the vanilla recipe, we need three assemblers. That's three times the power necessary, three times the space necessary versus the alternate recipe. Now the component cost, so let's see, this makes 18 per three, but we're making 15 per minute. So you do 15 divided by three. So that's five. It, it does five segments, if you will. It creates three at a time and it does it five times per minute. So we take the 15 divided by three, that gives us our five. Then we take that five and we multiply it by these values here. So the 15, or I'm sorry, the five, times 18 gives us 90. So that's 90 iron plates per minute. And then the 50 times five, it's 250 screws per minute. Now, yes, this takes 60. And this is what? Five times 30. <laughs> Easy math here. So 30 iron plates and 60 screws versus 90. And what at 250? So it takes some extra screws, but again, you're making more per minute from one machine, which is huge. This can help you consolidate the space required, the belting required, and keep your space nice and clean. So that's why I would stress doing hard drive hunting early on in the game if you're trying to find some alternate recipes to set yourself up better for the future. And then of course, obviously, the awesome sink using those complex components that we found getting the coupons and unlocking various tools or various objects that you can use to keep your factories clean and technically speaking, efficient. So with that, I hope this was very helpful for you guys. I hope this encourages you to go out and explore. Again, before you go hunting, make sure that you have the components that you're going to need to make some biomass burners in case the pods require electricity to unlock and also a general handful of various components and definitely make sure you bring beacons should you not have the components or the power requirements to unlock those pods. So with that, if you found this video helpful, feel free to leave a like. If you want to see more content in the future, be sure to subscribe. And if you have any questions or if there's something you want to see specifically in the future, leave a comment below and I'll see what I can do. 
And with that, thank you guys for watching. Take care.